Hello, Assalamu alaikum. Uh, this is me, Dr. Jahangir, and you are watching me on my YouTube channel, that is uh, Dr. Jahangir Fun. Well, today we are going to discuss uh, a very important topic, that is uh, respiratory failure. Types of respiratory failure, mechanism of respiratory failure, and treatment. <laughs> so, <clears throat> how do you define respiratory failure? <clears throat> So it is defined as uh, inability of the body to oxygenate the tissues, which is manifested by ABGs uh, having a PO2 of less than 60 mm of Hg. That is the definition of respiratory failure. Now, what are the types of respiratory failure. So there are two main types of respiratory failure. We are having type 1 respiratory failure and we are having type 2 respiratory failure. What happens in type 1 respiratory failure? In type 1 respiratory failure, your PO2 is less than 60 mm of Hg. You cannot define respiratory failure without ABGs having a PO2 less than 60. That is compulsory criteria for definition of respiratory failure. So type 1 is the CO2 is you are having a PO2 less than 60 mm. The second, the CO2 is either low are normal. The CO2 can be either low or normal. <clears throat> now, in order to know the normal values of the CO2, you must refer to my videos on ABGs. Interpretation of ABGs I have discussed. There is a 22 minutes video regarding the normal values, the metabolic acidosis, metabolic alkalosis, respiratory acidosis, respiratory alkalosis compensation formulas, how would you say max acidosis, then there is another lecture on metabolic acidosis, how the A9 gap will help you in reaching the diagnosis of metabolic acidosis in case of a normal pH and a normal PCO2 and a normal bicarbonate. The link I will give in the description below of this video. The CO2 can be normal that is understandable, but how can the CO2 low in type 1 respiratory failure? Now, if the patient is having hypoxia, what will be its effect? It will act on the respiratory center. It will act on the respiratory center to increase the oxygen concentration. So, what will it do? it will increase respiratory rate. Now, by doing so, in order to correct the oxygen concentration, in order to correct the PO2 in the blood, the respiratory rate is increased. Now, the respiratory rate, when it is increased, there will be wash out of the CO2. Now, that is the reason of the low CO2 in case of type 1 respiratory failure. Now, coming toward type 2 respiratory failure. The type 2 respiratory failure is defined, is defined as PO2 less than 60. Now, often we ignore this thing. Again, in type 2 respiratory failure, PO2 must be less than 60 mm. Now, over here, the CO2 is high. Now, this is the criteria. <clears throat> the CO2 is high in case of type 2 respiratory failure. That is more than 45. This is <clears throat> type 2 respiratory failure. Over here, the CO2 is low or normal. How it can be low? I explained that. Normal is easily understandable. But over here, the PO2 is low and the CO2 is high. That is more than 45. This is type 2 respiratory failure. Now, coming towards the basic mechanism. If you know the basic mechanism, this was just the definition. Now, we are moving toward the mechanism. If you know the mechanism of type 1 respiratory failure and type 2 respiratory failure, you automatically know the causes. And if you know the causes, treat the cause if that is treatable. 
and manage accordingly. Management is very simple if you know the mechanism. Now, proceeding toward the mechanism. So what happens in type 1 respiratory failure? There is a weak you know, mismatch. Now, if you understand this, you know the mechanism. If you know the mechanism, you know the diagnosis. If you know the diagnosis, you can manage the patient. Weak your know, mismatch. Ventilation perfusion defects. So either there is a problem in we, that is ventilation. Either there is a problem in Q, that is perfusion. I think now it's very easy. If problem in ventilation, like for example, if oxygen is low in the atmosphere. Now this is a very important cause. If a person goes to the Mount Everest or K2, so the oxygen concentration is low at a very height. So if that oxygen is low, that would cause type 1 respiratory failure. Number 2, we are talking about the ventilation defect. So let's suppose this is the airway and this is the blood vessel. So we are talking about problem over here, the alveoli. <laughs> so the first thing was atmosphere. The second thing, what can happen in the alveoli that can cause weak mismatch? Pneumonia. Consolidation. Yes, of course. Pulmonary edema. Pulmonary edema. Pulmonary hemorrhage. Pulmonary hemorrhage. Any accumulation inside the alveoli. Any accumulation inside the alveoli. Any accumulation inside the alveoli. That may be uh, inflammatory exuded, give you pneumonia. That may be fluid overload or due to cardiac or non cardiac origin, pulmonary edema. That may be blood, pulmonary hemorrhage, or that may be malignant cells, malignancy, even malignancy can give you type 1 respiratory failure. So starting from atmosphere, you can see over here, coming toward anything that causes accumulation inside the alveoli would cause a weak EO mismatch. And if there is a weak EO mismatch, there is type 1 respiratory failure. It is so simple. If you know the mechanism, you can reach diagnosis, and if you can reach diagnosis, you can treat the patient. Now, if the patient is having a history of cough, fever, and shortness of breath for the last uh, five days, let's say, for example, and you should do a chest x-ray, there is a consolidation. What is diagnosis? Pneumonia, type 1 respiratory failure. If a patient is having a hypertension, ischemic heart disease, and already diagnosed with CCF, and now patient is having arthopnea, so what is diagnosis? Pulmonary edema. A patient is having a hemoptosis and low HB. And also patient is having some sort of autoimmune diseases like for example say ACLE, rheumatoid arthritis, or scleroderma. So pulmonary hemorrhage, diffuse alveolar hemorrhage, the DAH. If the patient is already diagnosed case of uh, some sort of malignancy, and if he, she presents, uh, he or she presents type 1 respiratory failure, you should think of the malignant cells over there. So it's very simple. Now coming toward perfusion defect. What is the name of the perfusion defect which can, which can cause weak you mismatch and give you type 1 respiratory failure? Point number one, do you know something of pulmonary embolism? If there is pulmonary embolism, so it means this was, there is a clot, there is no blood coming. If there is no blood coming, coming then there is weak you mismatch. Now, what can be another cause that can cause the weak your mismatch? Shunting. Shunting due to any reason. Shunting of blood. Due to any reason. If there is a shunting of blood, that can give you a weak your mismatch. If the blood is not coming through pulmonary artery. All cyanotic heart diseases. Cyanotic heart diseases. 
because in cyanotic heart disease what happens there is a right to lift shunts so all patients who are having right to lift shunts the blood would not come here to take oxygen because there is direct shunting it bypasses the lungs so that will give you type 1 respiratory failure you know the mechanism you know the patient you know the diagnosis this was mechanism for type 1 respiratory failure now moving toward type 2 respiratory failure